Hello, my name is Boris Nissenbaum. I'm a solution architect on the global solution architecture team specializing in Microsoft technologies on Amazon Web Services. The topic of today's presentation is monitoring and diagnostic of .NET applications with AWS X-Ray. I would like to point out that this presentation is not a deep dive into all the features and capabilities of the AWS X-Ray. For an extensive investigation of AWS X-Ray features and capabilities, I suggest watching the correspondence sessions from reInvent 2017, the links to which I will provide at the end of the presentation. Today's session will include a brief general overview of AWS X-Ray SDK. We will go over location and installation of SDK and NuGet packages, key points for enabling the application to take advantage of AWS X-Ray service, and review the specific steps needed to monitor .NET application requests and point to the location of extensive information on the X-Ray service. I will show you how easy it is to enable your custom ASP.NET application for X-Ray's monitoring. We will walk for a sample .NET application and identify the basic steps that are required to enable it to generate traces in the AWS X-Ray service. As you're probably aware, X-Ray allows developers to analyze distributed applications and helps troubleshoot issues with application, its underlying services, and performance. AWS X-Ray supports a number of development frameworks, such as Java, .NET, .NET Core 2.0, Python, and Node.js. It has an ability to generate traces for AWS services, as well as for the request to non-AWS services over HTTP and HTTPS. It can also monitor requests to various AWS database services, such as DynamoDB, and RDS. AWS X-Ray SDK for .NET has been around for a while. However, a new version 2.0 has been introduced in the recent weeks. This version is available as a beta and has been released to the GitHub. Version 2.0 not only supports the legacy .NET frameworks, but also enables support for .NET Core 2.0 as well as AWS Lambda support. So let's take a look at sample ASP.NET application. OK, so here we have a sample uh, ASP.NET application, which I opened in Visual Studio 2017. Let's examine what NuGet packages are installed here. So if I go to Manage NuGet Packages, you can see that I have AWS SDK.core and AWS SDK DynamoDB uh, NuGet packages installed. It simply stores the data in DynamoDB and queries AWS RDS service for data. The product controller module defines a few functions which are used by this application. As you can see, the query product function, make HTTP request, and query SQL are the three functions defined here. If we publish this application to AWS Elastic Beanstalk, it will look like this. If I retrieve the product from the database, you can see that the application responds with the product displayed on the screen. We can do a few more queries to make sure that the data is there. So now let's go to AWS console and take a look at the X-ray traces. So uh, as you can see, we currently do not have any service map or traces generated by this application. Now let's take a look at the same application which has been instrumented for AWS X-ray. First of all, we have additional NuGet packages installed here, which are specifically related to AWS X-Ray and AWS X-Ray SDK. So those are AWS X-Ray Recorder.core, AWS X Recorder Handlers, ASP.NET, and SDK. There are a few AWS X-Ray related packages part of this SDK. You can find them if you browse it and make a filter on X-Ray. As you can see, this is the list of the all available AWS X-Ray SDK NuGet packages. It's important to remember that since this SDK is currently in beta, you have to check the box include pre-release to make sure that you can see those packages. The next step will be to register X-Ray for the object of system.web.http application class in the init method of global ASX file. In global ASX file, you can see that I have 
AWS X-Ray registered uh, with the default application name ASP.NET Test. Keep in mind that this name is the name which will show up in AWS X-Ray console. You can use any name you want to uniquely identify your application. The next thing we need to do is to configure the web.config file. Over here, we're registering the AWS X-Ray plugin. Uh, in this case, it's going to be EC2 plugin because the application will work on uh, Elastic Beanstalk, so it will utilize the EC2 plugin. Interesting point here is that if disable X-ray tracing key is set to false, the X-ray tracing is enabled. If you want to temporarily stop X-ray tracing, you can set this value to true. Now let's take a look at product controller. You can see that the functions which were shown regionally have been slightly modified with the new methods from AWS SDK. In particular, we now have AWS X-ray recorder instance trace method, which allows us to trace the request to the DynamoDB database, as well as outgoing HTTP request and SQL queries. For outgoing uh, HTTP request, we are utilizing the getResponseTrace method. To query the SQL server, we are using a wrapper class, which is called traceable SQL command. This traceable SQL command can be utilized interchangeably with SQL command and allows you to trace the request to any SQL Server database. After the application is published to Elastic Beanstalk, it looks exactly like the non-instrumented application which I've shown you before. If we make a few queries for the products inside the database, we will generate a few traces which I'll show you in the X-Ray console in a second. If we open up the AWS X-Ray console, we can see that our application currently has generated a few traces. If we take a look at the traces, you can see that we are monitoring the request to the HTTP as well as SQL Server. If we get, go to the trace details, you can see the request which was generated by my application. So there is a 304 millisecond time uh, which was required to issue the um, ASP.NET test which includes a query product, DynamoDB, and outgoing HTTP request. Separately, we have, a, we have a subtrace to query SQL, which took one millisecond. We can take a look at the raw data, which is presented in the JSON format, as well as a timeline with all the dependencies. We can drill down to individual requests for additional information. As you can see, we successfully instrumented the application for AWS X-Ray. And we can see the traces in AWS X-Ray console. And finally, as promised, where we can find uh, more information, um, I would suggest referring to reInvent 2017 sessions, which I put on the screen. The documentation for AWS X-Ray can be found at this link. Uh, it's also very important that you know about the location of the X-Ray.NET SDK um, on GitHub, as well as the developer blog, which covers all the most important functionality of AWS X-Ray. That concludes our today's presentation about AWS X-Ray SDK. Thank you for watching.